Hello, Ken Spriggs here with uh, part 13, or actually the finale of my discovery build, uh, my commission build. Uh, a bit of a delay, a couple of reasons. I've been working a lot of extra time at work recently, the last few weeks, and, um, and that's kept me pretty busy. But I've also had a big struggle with getting the pod bay to fit inside of the um, command sphere with the cockpit primarily because when i built that i it was from green strawberry and uh, the green strawberry photo etch set would fit in just fine but i then afterwards got the newly released stargazer kit and which is much nicer than the um than the photo etch one from green strawberry so i built that instead and i really didn't have the star the, the stargazer to compare and to test it so um so quite a bit of work going into getting that to fit uh, and i did a few other modifications on the actual ship as well as far as the power and things like that so all right um but let's go ahead and um, we'll take a look at that now i'm not going to show the final reveal in this video because i'm going to do a live stream uh, of the final reveal and i'm going to hang it up on the wall where my original uh discovery is right now I did a live stream a few weeks ago showing that one just to test it. And I'm just going to put it up there on the wall just to, to have it with the space background and, uh, and get some good shots of it and do a live stream so people can ask questions and, and take a look at it. So, um, But then that video will be available as well. If you can't make the live stream, it's going to be Wednesday, this Wednesday, which is the 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll put that in the description and I'll be doing that live stream. And, um, but I will show you everything up to the point of revealing the final ship. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm beginning work on finalizing the wiring for my interior to get it put into the command sphere that I finished painting. So I started with the cockpit. And um, I did some initial testing to see how these are going to fit together the pod bay and the cockpit into the ship i had to do a little bit of adjusting as you can see i had to cut the bottoms of these off i ended up cutting away most of the five minute epoxy around this connection and lowering it down because it was it wasn't uh sitting flush and you can kind of see that i flattened it out a bit to fit uh so let me turn that on and kind of show you I still have to finish gluing these in place, cover these over and seal them and then just paint it black so it's not uh, it's not coming through the bottom, but uh, you can see the inside of there. This little Frank figure, which he's also outside the ship, so we'll just have a little bit of <laughs> artistic license, but uh, you can see the, oh, sorry. You can see the side lights that I made a little bit of a blue tinge on the inside, which is kind of cool. You can see the back hallway, which is getting kind of bled together in this light. But looking pretty cool. And then you can see the controls. And they're slowly changing colors and it's cool how it kind of does it out of sync so they um they kind of look like they're they're actually changing colors oh you're getting a little bit of flickering on that side panel there i need to check on that wiring i was having an issue initially yeah see that i gotta work on these obviously there's some loose connection in there i'll get that fixed up I was having an issue where I was getting a little bit of flickering in the cool white lights. It was kind of a pulsing. And so I, I took the wires and I tested them individually. And I realized I had um, what's called a wigwag LED. It's used in like a model police car, that kind of thing. It, it blinks from red to blue, red to blue, back and forth. So I had two of those. I still have them attached in there. And uh, I had them test up to some fiber optics so that some of the controls were doing that. They were changing from red to blue. Uh, and it was just interfering with it. 
it wasn't from Evan Designs. Uh, I had some old RC parts from like a heli little RC helicopter, Mokujo helicopter. And I had the wiring, I had these in there and they were just the, the LEDs onto one set of wires, there were two of them. So it didn't have any kind of resistors or any other electronics and that pro probably was the problem. So I just took those out of the equation. They weren't that big of a deal. And then it, it started working right. Obviously I'm just checking the rest of the wiring. I'm getting it shortened down. And then obviously I have to figure out where I have a loose connection to get that fixed up and get this all sealed up. And then what I'm gonna do is connect on a, an ex a connector here. This is the, the male part. And that's gonna be ultimately wired into the two leads that are coming out of this. There and there. So when you take the top off, if he wants to, he can disconnect it, my client, and take off the whole top. Uh, not gonna get in there very often other than to change the batteries, but that'll make it more convenient if he needs to do that. Also, I need to um, wire into this the plug that's gonna go into this for the, the pod that sticks out in the front of it. So that'll be attached on the inside, but it'll be loose and enough play. So you can stick that in there, plug it together, pop that in and then put the lid back on so it has power. And I'll just wire that into this wiring. And then this wiring will go into the disconnect here that will go down into the main part of the ship. So, all right. Okay, so I wrapped around the wiring and I used some five minute epoxy to glue it right here on the side. And I have it sticking up on this side because when I put it into the sphere, I need to have one of the connectors over on this side to go to my external pod and one to go down for the power. So I have two connectors put on here the one here that's the female side, this will be secured inside. Once I get this glued in, I'm gonna secure these, this extra wiring into the interior of the command sphere. Give it enough play and enough slack so these things can be connected. Uh, this one will just be loose inside of here. So when you connect on the pod, hold on, let me get that here. as I showed in a previous video. So when you connect this female part onto here, I'm sorry, this male end into the female end and connect this onto the side of the ship, it's gonna be at the same power source as the, um, as the cockpit. And then the, um, the male connector will be connected to the power down in the ship in the bottom section where the pod bay is and it will wire into the um, to the power source that'll be behind the pod bay and connected to the remote sensor that's on the, the collar behind the sphere so okay so for now I'm gonna go ahead and get this glued into the ship and it just connects or on this front piece it just connects where that bare plastic still is I'm just going to use some regular glue on that and then I'll let that set up and then I'll reinforce it with some five minute epoxy to give a nice solid connection. And here is the cockpit glued into the ship. I have a lot of five minute epoxy around it and I've let it set up for a while. So let me get those two wires there attached inside, give them a little bit of slack, and then I'll be ready to um, go ahead and put a battery on this and do a little test and show you what that's going to look like.
And there is the cockpit inside of the sphere lit up. Looking pretty sweet. Let's have a piece of black paper background here to kind of give it a bit of a space background. In a moment, I'll put the pod onto it and put it against my space background. But you see the little uh, Frank figure in the cockpit seat. You can make out the lights on the side, a little bit of controls. Same on that side. The back hallway, you can kind of make it out. It looks a lot sharper and more defined in real life than the camera is showing you. And then the controls. Slowly changing color. All right, but looking pretty awesome. Let me go ahead and put the um, external pod onto it and show you how that's going to look. Okay, and there's the pod arm attached onto the side and wired in and lit up. I still have a few little light leaks I have to finish up, but no big deal. And there it is facing off against the lit cockpit, which looks pretty awesome. The door's closed. Client's not going to really display it this way. Most likely he'll have the doors open, the center door and the left door open up. And we're going to have another pod coming out of this door probably, and this one will let you see inside. Or he can remove them and display it in any of these modes. So we can certainly do it in this mode. So. Okay, let me put that up against my star background up on the wall and show you how that's going to look. And there's the pod next to a space background or a black background, so it looks like the pod is just in space and it blends into the background. Open the pod bay doors, how? Sorry, Dave, I cannot do that. This little pod. Hey, wait a minute. Why is Frank in the cockpit? What's going on here? <laughs> All right. All right, so now that I have the cockpit installed into the ship, I'm ready to do the same thing with the pod bay. Uh, and similarly to what I had to do with the cockpit, when I finished this quite a while ago, I did not trim down all of the wiring. So here's all the spaghetti wires <laughs> coming out of here. So one of the th main things I have to do before installing this is get all of these trimmed down, combined together, check for any kind of uh, shorts or anything, make sure everything's lighting up properly, and then bring all of the wires from this into just one red and black set of wires, which will then combine with the one set coming down from the connector for the cockpit for the top, and those will go together. And then those are gonna both be wired into the red and black leads for the remote control circuit and of course then that gets wired into the power supply which will be in the kit behind this the two AA batteries in the holder so one other thing I do have to work on is I made this so that the client can actually display this in several different modes he can have the ship as I was just showing recently right before this he can have this the doors all closed 
the pod that's extended outside wanting to get into the ship. So he can pose it like that if he wants or display it that way. He can also uh, open up the front door and the side door. The front door gives the best view into the pod bay and lets you see all the, the really cool lights and details in there. Uh, and then he can put a removable pod platform that's extended on the left coming out or he can close this door and just have the pod extended out of the center which is also another shot that we see during the film so he has some leeway here to display this in different ways that he wants uh, so what I did was I came up with an idea and I showed this in detail in one of the earlier videos in this build so I put fiber optics and anything that lights up on this are the headlights the cockpit is not in this one that one's not it's not the same as the other one uh, but I do have fiber optics going up through for the headlights and you can see them right there coming down in this little nub all that is is a piece of styrene tube so I brought them down into that glued them in place and then I cut that off sanded it smooth and then that nub just goes down into the little hole in this pod platform and there's an S there's an smd in there that lights up cool white smd that lights up now what i did in order to power it which i'm quite proud of i think it's pretty awesome design that i made is that i wired the smd into these two brass rods one for positive one for negative this one of course doesn't have a light it's just it's just the the rods and I'll talk about that styrene here in a second. And then on the pod bay, these rods fit nicely into pieces of, or some brass square tubing you can see right there. Either one of those. So when that makes contact, it creates a circuit and it turns on the light and it lights up the headlights. So you can see underneath, and I actually did this on the center and the left one, you can see the wires there that are soldered onto and then covered in five minute epoxy. So there's power going to both of those sides. So he has the option of putting it in the center and it'll light up, putting it in the left side, it'll light up. And vice versa, the one that isn't lit can go in the other side where the other one is not in. Uh, now, when I first did this, I was having some problems because I had this in, I had it on, it was lit up, it was working just fine. I went ahead and put this one into its slot and the light went off, it stopped working. And I was fiddling with it. It took the longest time to kind of figure out what was going on. And what was happening is on the bottom of this, the photo etch set came with a piece that's shaped like this piece of styrene and it went on top of it. And obviously being metal, it made contact with these two pieces, which were going into uh, one of the two parts that had power so it created a circuit and it it stopped everything because you can't have the positive and negative touching together it messes up the circuit so I had to take that off and put on some some styrene instead and I did the same on this one now I also put this little teeny piece of square stock on the edge and I did it on both because these are removable and they'll be removable from outside of the ship and I just wanted something that you could get like your thumbnail under and get a nice little, you know, grip to hold on to. You can pull it out, put it in, same thing with the center. So that these two are reversible. If he wants to put the pod on this side, he can. If he wants to put it in the middle, he can do that as well. So, okay. So looking pretty cool. What I have to do now is go ahead and get these painted black. Uh, not the light block, I'm just to blend them in. So they look normal again. And then... Uh, these will be ready to go and then I can go ahead and focus on trimming down these wires into some single leads uh, one other thing I did is just like I did on the top part that I showed I had to do some trimming some sanding down of these bits this is five minute epoxy that I put over the large mega SMDs for the roof and I had painted them and so it was it was making contact with the cockpit and it wasn't fitting right inside the ship. So I used my Dremel to just sand these down smooth. The um, 
the SMDs down in there pretty good so it didn't affect it at all and I was careful not to break the wires or cut them or anything. So I got it down to where this is going to fit inside and have some little, tiny, tiny bit of leeway, but it's a snug fit for sure uh, as far as getting uh, both of these sets into here. Probably mainly because this was not designed to work with, this is from Green Strawberry, the other one is from Stargazer, so they weren't designed to fit inside. If I had both of the Stargazers, they were designed to match up pro appropriately inside the ship. Same thing with um, uh, the Photo Etch one that was with the Green Strawberry, that would have worked as well. So, okay, let me go ahead and get working on these and then we'll, we'll get this trimmed down and start getting this wired into the ship. Right, and here is the um, trim down wiring down to just one set of magnet wire. I just have it plugged into a AA battery holder for now just to turn it on and show you how it's going to look lit up. And I've shown this in a previous video quite a while ago in this build when I first completed the, um, the pod bay. Uh, so this one was quite a lot of work. It was very tricky. Uh, a lot of wires that I had to bring together. It's not pretty, but you can see all the different things that are brought together and soldered together. And the trouble was that because I had so many LEDs, I could not bring them all together into one connection. It was just too many wires trying to connect. And then they would, um, some of these wires are just fragile. So they would, they would break and have like a, a short and it would be flickering so I had to take like say three of them put them together into one bring off another set take another couple bring them into one take it off and so on until I ended up with pretty much just like three at the end that I combined together into this one uh, and I did find that the magnet wire is a little sturdier I like it better than the other uh, wire sort of like this stuff here which both of them are solid, but this just seems to break a little easier than, um, than the magnet wire. So I try to combine these into the magnet wire, as you can see, which is what this is, and then combine it together. So, all right. So uh, let me go ahead and turn that on, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. All right, there you go. Looking pretty sweet. Maintenance quarter back there. You can see the um, the workbench changing color. It's a bit washed out in the camera, but it's it's a a nice bright color. It changes between the different colors. You can see the red there. That's pretty cool. And if we can see in the, it's kind of hard to see, but you can just kind of make out. Let me get in there. Hold on. There you go, you can make out in the uh, Athena room, the lab area. Also changing colors. And of course the pod, which is extendable. And I can actually switch it between, sorry, between this side and the center if I want to, so, okay. All right, so I'm glad that's all done. Now all I have to do is um, is get that wired into the wiring. These have to be trimmed down. I have to trim these two connections down and um, and then get this circuit board. This is for the remote control right back in there. I need to get this glued back into the collar and um, and then I'll be ready to go ahead and get this inside the ship, get it wired in, and then also wire in the um, the connector that goes up to the um, the cockpit. So if you recall from previous video, that one has a connector coming down that's disconnectable, so I can 
take the top off and not have to have it permanently wired. And then I also have the, um, the connector wired into that that comes out of the side for the pod facing the front as well. So, all right. So before I get to that, one more thing I want to try to adapt um, as far as the power supply uh, and, and showing how I want to do that now. All right. All right. So finishing up the last details of the, um, of the kit and getting the wiring all figured out, I've decided to take a different route. Um, primarily because with the pod bay and the cockpit in the command sphere, they, they're not super heavy, but they add some weight to it. If you add a AA battery holder and two batteries, it definitely adds significant weight. And what I found on my original one is that the sphere tends to want to sag a bit in the front, especially since the spine itself, even though you're going to generally support it, it's... It's just taking more weight. Uh, and I just wanted to free up some space in that. So I decided to go ahead and return to the original idea I thought for my first one. And that was to run the wiring down through the spine and put the batteries in the propulsion unit. Um, now my first one, unfortunately, when I glued the two halves together before putting the wiring through, I clogged up the steel tube and wasn't able to get wiring through it. And I tried everything to break that loose and couldn't do it. So um, this is not gonna be glued together before I ship it. But what I am gonna do is run the wiring through it. That way it can be loose in the center and I can just fold these two in half and make them half the size as far as packaging them and getting it shipped out to my client. So it's not a problem with a long package. So I determined that my propulsion unit where I have that little piece in there. I have enough room in there to fit this two battery unit. Just goes in and goes sideways. I'm trying to do this with one hand. <laughs> there we go. All right, but it does fit. Sorry for the lighting. Yeah, and it sits right down inside like you can see. And still plenty of room above it to put the, the metal tube in through that hole. So what I'm going to end up doing is, I um, this is the back part that goes through it. Now since the steel tube goes all the way through and actually extends out a little bit into the center engine bell, uh, I had to cut a hole, channel a groove into the steel, which I use my Dremel for. And I smoothed it out quite a bit so it wouldn't be a problem with the wiring. So what I can do is run the wiring through, fish it out through here, and then I'll just seal that up with some five minute epoxy so the wire isn't tempted to be pulled back in or anything. And then I'll just wire the power wire onto this and give enough play so this can be pulled out it will be attached onto the wiring that goes into this, so it won't be separate, but uh, it doesn't have to be. The idea is that this is held on by magnets, so when he needs to change the batteries, he just pulls this off. There'll be some play. Once he gets this out far enough, he'll be able to just go ahead and pull out the battery. And I can leave plenty of wiring in there, so you can pull this entire thing out, get the battery, and change it and then just tuck it all in there when you're done. Won't be a problem. And then um, also I'm gonna leave the switch on it because if you leave the batteries turned on and using a remote, which I do, the remote sensor is still gonna be in the front of the ship. It tends to leach the power out of the batteries over a couple of weeks and then they just die. So if he's not wanting to turn it on or use it, he can just open this up and turn it off he wants to keep the batteries in or just take the batteries out either way but um but this switch would have to be on to give it power to go through the tube and up to the front and then the wiring will then just attach into the circuit for the remote control and then the power lines to the leds from that will go into the uh the pod bay and the cockpit obviously so all right all right so i started wiring 
the um, wire through the front of the, um, the spine. And I'm just using this thin gauge twisted magnet wire. Uh, I have some other wires that are like plastic coated and also solid, but I've had a lot of trouble with those being delicate and breaking. The magnet wire seems pretty sturdy. Uh, it It is thinner, which is nice because it can fit through the, the spine easily. Um, but it is definitely more sturdy, I believe, than using some other wires that I have. So I have it going through here and I have an ample amount coming out through this part, which will then go into this half and come back out through the back. And then just come out through that hole right there. And once I get enough of a play of wire out of that, I will simply put some five minute epoxy over that and just hold that in place so the wire isn't tempted to be pulled through again. Uh, and then, um, well, we'll see. Because he has to have some play in order to be able to um, to get these together. But actually, that's not a problem because he's going to have some play in the front. So when this wire comes through the front, it's not going to be... Uh, it'll be attached to some disconnects, which I'll show you here in a moment. So those will have some play. So actually, yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll glue this part in so it's not tempted to pull and, and have any effect on it. And then I'll get that glued, or not glued, I'm sorry, I'll get that wired into the, the battery compartment and just leave enough play. So in the end, what I'm gonna have, I don't wanna try to pull that out here. Um, what I'll have is this, which will be loose from the back, It'll be wired into the wiring with enough play onto this part. And then when he's ready to connect it, he will just uh, tuck this in there and then feed the, the metal tube in, of course, like he normally would do. And then just tuck in the wiring before he brings the magnets together and connects it. And then uh, that'll be sealed up. So that'll be nice. That'll put distribute the weight a little more in the back. And this is still not very heavy since I don't have any interior in it. So it'll even out the weight. This and the command sphere are the two heaviest parts of the kit as it is, you know, and then you have these spindly spine holding it up. So, okay. So um, let me go ahead and get that wiring through there. And then once I get that all done, I'll be ready to start getting everything connected. So let me show you the connectors that are gonna go in the front of this. So in a few places through this kit, I'm using these connectors that I get from Evan Designs. They're very cool. All it is really, as you can see, are two wires that go into this uh, female part, which has a counterpart, which is the male end with two pins that come through. And you just have to match up the red with the red and the black with the black. So you have your positive and negative. And they just snap easily into each other. So they're nice to use. Um, because I still want to be able to have the sphere disconnectable from the front, just like the back disconnectable. It makes it a lot easier to ship and to transport. Um, so ultimately, he's going to glue the two parts of the spine together. So that's going to, that kind of has to be to give us some sturdiness. Otherwise, it isn't going to sit upright if you don't. But it's still nice to be able to pull the two main parts off of it using magnets. So... Uh, what I determined was the the hole where this front steel tube goes through into the sphere is too small to accommodate this the head of this. And I, I did a little bit of modifying, but I didn't want to do too much because I don't want to affect the integrity of that little bit of steel tube going into that to give it some stability. So what I decided instead, which will work fine, is... All these are is just with a plastic housing and that plastic housing could actually be removed. I've done that before. Sorry for the focus. So I just took an X-Acto knife and just that little groove in between them. I just split it in two 
And you can see here are the two halves, two parts, positive and negative. And they're still completely intact. They don't have to be attached together to be, you know, workable. So what I figured out is one of these goes through easily. And, and you can certainly fit the thickness of two of these. So what I'll do is I'll just have them offset a little bit sort of something like this so that one's a little longer than the other and that way this can go through into the sphere and i'll still again give some extra play because uh, when he connects it up i'm going to have the corresponding parts inside the sphere the wiring that he will just you know put the sphere onto here after he runs the wires through they will have enough give that all he has to do is plug in the positive and negative into this and that'll give power to the to the leds um, so so that solved that problem and then of course just like i'm doing in the back once i get this into place well it'll be this wiring like this i'll just cut these down or whatever and get them soldered on and and put on some shrink tube because also shrink tube is not going to fit through this thin steel tube the only thing it's going to fit is through this wire. So what I'll do is obviously cut this off at one point, cut this off at one point, and then attach the two together, put some shrink tubing on it. And then, well, let me think. I'm going to have to figure that out. Yeah, it should be fine. As long as the shrink tubing isn't thicker than this. So the same concept. You know, I can have the shrink tubing on one, maybe about here. Shrink tubing on the other, maybe about here. And then that way, the idea is that this has to be removable. And so as long as I keep it nice and thin, I have some thin shrink tube and the wiring is only two leads going together. So it shouldn't be a problem being able to keep those nice and thin. Uh, and then ultimately what you're going to have is this coming out shrink tube onto part of this. And this will be sticking loose. You can fish it into the, into the sphere and then, um, and then bring bring the connectors together. Let me show this here. So there's that hole. You can see how I tried to cut out a little bit on either side, but I decided against it because I didn't want to ruin that integrity. But um, but that's that hole. That's as big as it's going to be. So that when you fish it through, it's going to come out and have some play, and then just click it into the um, the, the, the other versions, the male ends, in order to bring power. Uh, and then this is going to be trimmed down too and have the circuit board glued in the back. So this isn't going to be in the way of anything either, just like I did with the wiring for the cockpit and the pod bay. Um, now one other thing I did as well, as I was showing in my live stream, I was having some trouble getting this on to here because the aluminum tubes that I initially used are more flexible, aluminum is a soft metal, so they were kind of bending a bit and it was just getting tougher and tougher to put them together. So I tore those out and um, I tore out the pieces that were holding them into here and uh, took a different route. So two things were affecting it. One is that originally those aluminum tubes were shorter than that stainless steel tube there so I had to put the stainless steel tube in first and then try to work these and twist it and it was a pain in the butt. It's far easier to start with these three pins or at least two of them, line them up and then the third one lines up and then I can get them in. And then that middle steel tube will just fit in there naturally. So I also reversed the way they're connected. So I glued in, I got some, some brass rod instead. It's, it's much stronger. Uh, than aluminum and also I use the rod instead of tubes so it's stronger and that way it's going to hold up better and then I um, I also went and put in corresponding tubes into those holes you can see right there that they slide into so also giving them some strength and then reinforce that with some five minute epoxy on the inside so it's a lot easier to do. So a good way to kind of line this up that I've found, 
since obviously you're going to be putting in the pins first into the sphere, is that if you look at this, you see the two magnets. They're not quite parallel with the bottom. They're a little off kilter, but um, underneath them, you see two of the pin holes and then one at the top in the center. So all I do is I line up the same thing. So you've got the two magnets. So you can see that those two would be underneath the magnets. So I just start with those two going in. Once I get the two lined up, I just am able to line up the top one and start sliding them in. And then the, the steel tube in the middle just goes in naturally. And it's a much stronger fit. So it'll hold it together a lot better than the original. So, okay. So now what I need to do is get these trimmed down, uh, get the wiring, get this wiring put in for the disconnect so that this will all be ready to go. And I'll just have these two wired together, but you know, not glued together. Get this all set up on the back so that's ready to go. And then that way all I'll have to do is connect the wiring from the remote control sensor into the two leads from the cockpit and the two leads from the, the pod bay uh, and get the pod bay glued into there and that'll pretty much finish it up all right And here is the attached power supply onto this rod. And as you saw in the previous stills, I put some 5-minute epoxy around that to keep that solid. So the wires aren't really going to be yanked on at all. So they're not going to pull loose. Uh, but there's plenty of play. As you can see, the, the metal rod is loose. There's the battery. So there's plenty of room to put the battery in there and then slide that in and position it and put it all together. So let me put that together and show you the ship uh, put together with the wiring in it. And here is the finished wiring through the ship. So you can see the uh, magnet wire up here. Still some play in it. I have the back propulsion unit attached and then I have the two leads coming out of the, the front that will fit into the command sphere and of course black for negative red for positive and then also too there's some play this isn't glued in place in the tube so when my client gets the model he'll be able to fish this wire a little further through, glue this piece into this end, and then this will all be one piece. And this, of course, is removable as far as the battery replacement is concerned. And then the, the sphere will go on. This will go on and connect into the power. So, okay, all I have to do now is finish getting the pod bay into the command sphere and, and wired up for power. And then we'll get this wrapped up. All right, so I'm working on the final step of getting the pod bay into the ship. Still running into some problems with it butting up against the cockpit. Here's the top of the ship, upside down, and it's butting into this piece right here. I've already trimmed that down somewhat, and I've sanded this down somewhat, but it's still giving me a problem. Um, now I'll kind of show you. So if I just position this in here, and obviously not having the, you know, the bottom on here to go with, you're not going to be able to see it as well. But if I bring this up, you can see that's butting up against that piece. And really, it's only that little tube. And I can't really get rid of that tube because that's working my fiber optics for the controls, which are blinking. And I just, there's no other way to move that as far as I can tell. Uh, the back here is loose enough of the wire, I can put it in the side, but the front is 
is tight with the fiber optics, so it's not really going to work. But what I could do is cut out, I could probably just cut out that a section of that piece altogether so that tube goes up inside of it. And then I'm thinking of doing two of the Mega SMDs. I have some more of them here. Some of the cool white Megas. I also have some cool white chip. So if I if I cut that piece out, what I would be doing is cutting out a section and get, taking out the SMD, obviously, putting one on the one side and one on the other and leaving a gap in between so that the, this whole tube could fit through. It wouldn't be right in the center, but I could measure it to see where it is. So literally, that box would just go around the tube altogether. That would free up a lot of that. Um, hopefully, these are short enough that they're not a problem. If not, I may have to do something with those as well. So let me start with that and then we'll come back to that and, and get this ready to go. All right, so I cut out that section there with my Dremel. As you can see, and removed the Mega SMD. There it is just sitting there on the extra piece. So I put it in and tested it. So this part fixes the issue with that top piece with that tube going through. So no issues there but I'm still getting a little bit of resistance up here in the front because they're just a little too high for those as well. So I'm gonna have to adjust those also. Let me put that back in and see where the problem is. I might just be able to do the center one just like I did because the side ones probably aren't interfering with the top. Let me do that, put that back in and see how that looks. All right, so you can see on the back now how that sets down in deeper. Sorry for the shakiness. And that tube is able to fit right down there in that groove. And I can even draw out a little bit more of that to give it some more room to, to work with. So other than that, even if this, even if that um, light box was flat onto the, to that flat part there, it would still be enough room. It would be fine. But the problem is, you can see if I look in there, there's a gap right there on the side, and on the other side, it's just in the middle. It's hard to see. It's the middle there that's hitting. Mainly because it looks like the middle of that is a little more raised as well. So I think if I just take out that middle one and lower it down, I can still get the proper light diffusion. So let me do that. And that one's loose enough that I can get to that wiring. Once I figure out that this is gonna fit, then I'll go ahead and get these wired back in where they're supposed to be. But for now, I just wanna get them out of the way to make sure this is gonna fit without any problems at all. And then that way I can proceed with just adjusting the lights. So, okay. All right, so I cut the middle one out and I tested it and it's a whole lot better. It's very, very close. But I'm still getting just a little bit of resistance from the ones on the side. So I'm just gonna bite the bullet and get and cut those ones loose as well. Now, as I showed in my previous video when I did this, which was quite a while ago, I recessed those down quite a bit, as you can see. So there's enough room down in there. So I can still do something like maybe just put a clear piece of styrene straight over that, with some vellum underneath it, and glue it straight onto it so it's down lower. Because these chips aren't very thick, but this plastic is. So if I can do that all three of them, I should be able to give myself enough room that it's going to comfortably fit inside of there. So let me go ahead and work on that too. All right, so I had a, a part of a video filmed where I had come up with these little replacements for the lights to go in on the ceiling. 
Uh, you can see these ones here that I made with just literally a piece of styrene with the Mega SMD glued into it. And it has just a little bit of that sticking up. Uh, got those all glued on there. Also made these two for the back. You can see this one here is broken up. But obviously, I ended up tearing this back out again because even with just that little bit of the Mega SMD sticking up, it was still just barely not fitting. There's just literally no clearance whatsoever. So I took it all back off. I sanded this entire part smooth and even hopefully a little bit thinner than what it really was. Uh, I ended up taking that one piece of vellum out of there because I wasn't happy with how it looked. You can see like that front one a little bit. You can see some of the black when you look at a certain angle. That one's not quite as visible, but the one here on the back is. And I want those to just be clean like you see the other ones. Uh, but when I put this on, I cleaned up all the five minute epoxy off, put it on there, put it inside. It fits with nothing whatsoever <laughs> coming up, at least in the front. The back's not a problem. So I can redo these ones and do a new Mega SMD. But I'm gonna do a different approach to keep these completely flush where I'm going to use uh, chip SMDs, white, oops, get off of there. Some cool white chip SMDs that I have. Oh, let me get a little bit of glue on there, my goodness. And put those in. I just want to be careful to make sure I have enough vellum paper. I did figure out why I was using the vellum. Vellum is really good for diffusing. It catches the light, especially if you have a couple of layers, but it keeps it nice and cool white because if I put in things such as fiber fill or cotton, it tends to really dim the light quite a bit. Whereas the, the vellum is really good at dispersing the light. It's thick enough and it stays white. And so it's the best approach to go. All of these are double thickness of it. And I might even put like one more layer, like for example, on this, I could put another layer of vellum inside of this box, and then that way it diffuses it even more. Uh, I'm still working on how to get the chips down into here and keep them flush with the surface. So I have no issues whatsoever. I might just groove out some grooves for the wiring to come out. That might be the best way to go, but it's really just this front part is the only issue right now that's that's uh, butting up against the cockpit. So, all right. So let me work on that, keep it as flush as possible, and hopefully get this finally completed. All right, so I came up with the most minimal lighting effect on the ceiling that I could. So I switched out to chip SMDs, as you can see right there, cool white. And I have six of them. I have two in each of these front parts. I went back and did the, um, the boxes on the back. That's what I originally came up with when I made the boxes on the front and used the uh, the mega SMDs. But these are actually set down into that little opening that I have. So they're flush. And then I took my Dremel and I just carved out some grooves on all of these. For the center one, I just cut out a groove here. And I actually took it through, you can see here how there's a little opening between the two leads, the red and the green. So I took this wire through that over top of it so it wouldn't be underneath the SMD and took it back, glued them both in place and they're nice and solid. I put down some CA glue on each of these, put down some accelerant Instaset and it hardened them in really nicely. So I have these two combined into one set. I have this into one set 
and then I have these two combined into one set. So I have three all together, and I stripped off the wires in the back. They're just all loose right now to get them all wired into, into place. Uh, they're all running off the same power, so it really doesn't matter if I combine them. It doesn't make any difference. They're all running in parallel rather than series. So one last thing I did in order to, uh, to light block these, and I may still do something with these, we'll see. As long as it doesn't bleed out through the front of the sphere, it really doesn't matter. You're not going to see it on the inside. Um, but these here, I can simply paint black since they're the styrene plastic light boxes. But these ones here, um, I just have them sitting loose. I also put one more little square. You can see it right in there underneath. Just loose um, of the vellum paper just to, to give it a one extra layer. So it's three layers of diffusion. And, um, and then the last thing I did was I cut out some very thin styrene. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's like 0 0.015 or 0 0.020, something like that. And, um, and what I'm doing is I'm just gonna lay it in over top of them. It's on a slant, so it's not gonna go in. And then this is, uh, this is foil tape self-adhesive foil tape now the reason I put the styrene in is because this foil tape is metal so if I just stick it right over top of these two SMDs you can see that the leads right there it's gonna short them out it's gonna make a connection and they're not gonna work so I put the styrene on well two reasons one because it will give it some more reflective properties because it's white and then it'll protect these from the foil tape the foil tape is nice and flat and it sticks on really well and it's definitely very strong light block it does not let any light through at all because it's actual metal foil so okay you can see it's still nice and flat and that's what i wanted i wanted absolutely nothing sticking up above the ceiling on the front the back is fine because i have that groove in the middle for that tube with the um with the fiber optics on the cockpit so let me get the rest of these two done the other two done and then we're gonna go ahead and get this wired up and get it in the kit. All right, there we go. So I have the um, aluminum tape over top of all three of them. I positioned the pod bay into the ship, sorry. And I have it tacked right there in that corner and this one here, and then down inside there a little bit just to position it. Uh, it did line up pretty good. I was a little bit concerned about the pods lining up, but uh, that platform, look straight and it's able to be removed I can also put the uh, platform over on this side or I can put the pod over on this side as well and we're in the center and it's nicely positioned and it fits inside I have the wires put together so I have the uh, this female connector here goes into the um, the wire coming down from the cockpit this male connector here in the back, that goes into the power connectors that come through the tube in the center when I connect it up. So just two connections in order to give power to everything. So let me go ahead and put this onto the ship because it'll be easier to put those connectors through and plug them in and then light that up and show you how that looks. All right, so pod bays all inserted into the command sphere and I I went ahead and connected it to the wires since I have that connector in there it's easy to do that it's obviously in pieces but um, I just wanted to put it together and show how the pod bay works I'm not going to show the final review of the entire ship until I do the live stream here coming up on uh, Wednesday at I believe 7 p.m. is what I'm doing. Yes, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which is where I'm located. And I'll repeat that again at the end of the video. And I'll show that. Uh, and I'll put that in the description. So, all right. So I have it all wired up. Got my remote control. If you remember, the, um, the sensor is in the back of this uh, collar at the bottom. You can't really see it, but it works. So let me turn it on. Voila. Fantastic. 
that's a welcome sight. <laughs> you can see the workbench changing colors and little screen, the little red howl next to them. And a lot of those colors get washed out. They're pretty good, vibrant colors that they cycle through. You've got the, um, got to keep it focused. You've got the maintenance quarter there in the back. You've got the pod over there, which is stationary. You've got the little figure of Dave coming in with his red space suit and green helmet, ready to disconnect how. Because his red helmet is sitting up there on the top because he forgot to take it. And then if I come over here, you got to go down kind of low to be able to see it. But there's the, um, the little displays back in the Athena room. Lab area, changing color. There's another bank above them, but like I said, you got to be down low enough. And then you can make out the, uh, the light there with a the ladder which is right there on top. Oh, come on. Now I did put the top on just to test it. I'm not really getting any light leaks coming out, so I'm not gonna worry about getting these covered up. It's just not really worth the trouble. But looking pretty sweet. And then as I had shown before, I have the um, connector here that goes for the, the cockpit, clicks in. I have the two connectors plugged in right here that come through the hole there. Oh, careful. I didn't like that. I hope there's nothing loose. Mm, doesn't seem like it. All right. Which go back through, obviously. And connect in the back so okay i'll check those circuits just to make sure everything's fine there but looking good and the lid fits on the top fits on now with no issues after all the <laughs> struggle 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 to get that to work so oh and then i have the um removable pod which can go into the center it can go into this side here See if I can do it on camera. It's a little tricky. Let me skip it. All right, and there's the pod in the left side. And you can also remove this platform. This comes out, and then you can switch it with this one. This one can go into there and light up in the center if he wants to do it that way. Or take this out altogether. Plus you have the doors that go onto it to cover it up, so. Fantastic. All right, so much, much work. Um, over a year in building this ship. Finally got it completed. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I did have a few issues that I've talked about throughout the videos themselves uh, when I put them together. Um, but some of it had to do with, with either um, me wanting to modify certain parts of the green strawberry kit to, to be able to make certain things work like the, um, uh, the maintenance corridor or the Athena room. Uh, plus, as you saw in this video, the issues that I had getting the two different interior kits to work together which they weren't designed to do, so I can't really blame them for that. But otherwise, uh, both of them turned out really well, and I'm really happy with the results. Uh, really happy also with the masking and how that turned out with the Aztec dummy masking set, which is fantastic. So uh, very glad uh, to have this all completed and coming together. Quite a lot of work, and I'll be um, getting ready to get that shipped out to my client here soon. So I will be having the final reveal on um, Wednesday which is the 20th and it's 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I will be showing the ship itself all put together and lit up. If you can't make it, it will be recorded and you'll be able to see it afterwards on YouTube. So, but if you can join me, certainly join me. If you wanna ask any questions and you know, share info in the chat and that kind of thing. So, okay. Well, thanks again to my new subscribers and I will see you for the live stream finale reveal.